I would like to introduce Takashi Nagaoka uh, for, for joining us. And thank you very much for hosting this conference. I know virtually, uh, but for initiating the forum this time around. And for, as Paulina says, running it so smoothly as, as you always do in the JFSA. It's always very impressive. Um, over to you. Thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you very much for a kind introduction. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening. Uh, it is my honor to have the chance to uh, speak to you all today at the EU Asia Financial Services Dialogue. And I would like to thank ASIFMA for inviting me here. I recall the ASIFMA uh, annual meeting almost two and a half years ago uh, when the event was held in Tokyo. And actually it was one of the meetings held over a few days including IOSCO's Asia Pacific Regional uh, Committee meeting and a high level dialogue among regulators uh, from the EU and Asia Pacific. And we had the pleasure of welcoming fellow regulators and market participants from the two regions and around the world to meet in Tokyo. Due to the COVID-19, uh, we had not been able to meet in person for more than two years. Uh, but looking at the bright side, uh, we have uh, adapted to the new environment and are now uh, taking advantage of virtual meetings to uh, exchange views in a flexible and timely manner. Uh, of course, I would have liked to meet in person over tasty local dishes, but uh, I'll, I'll leave it for the next time. And before I start, um, I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting in a very difficult time. Um, I do not intend to spend a lot on what is going on in Ukraine, but um, I would like to express that our hearts are with those uh, who are suffering from the current devastating situation. This grossly unnerving turn of events abruptly emerged just as the world was about to find its way to the path to recovery from the pandemic. So far, uh, the direct impact of the event and the sanctions uh, seems, to have, uh, seems to be rather limited in various markets, uh, which is quite fortunate, I should say. But given the added level of uncertainty, uh, it is essential that we, both the regulators and market participants, uh, carefully monitor developments in the market. Therefore, dialogues involving all the parties from different parts of the world, like the one we have today, uh, will be increasingly important. Now, uh, back to the main subject. Um, today, as the chair of IOSCO's Asia Pacific Regional Committee, or APRC in short, I would like to speak a little bit about the discussions and initiatives at the APRC uh, with the focus on digital assets and sustainable finance, which I believe are of great interest for many of you. As you may know, um, APRC is one of the IOSCO's four regional committees and plays an important role where securities regulators in the region meet regularly uh, to exchange views and discuss policy issues, which in turn uh, form the basis for inputs to wider IOSCO, as well as uh, share developments at the IOSCO level and disseminate them in the region. We also place a uh, great importance on, on inputs from the industry. Uh, for example, uh, we regularly uh, meet with ASIFMA, and in particular, uh, we found a report on market fragmentation in 2020, as well as the views shared during the past two meetings, uh, highly informative. At the IOSCO board level last year, uh, the APRC uh, submitted its observations and suggestions reflecting these inputs as appropriate, and now they are in the hands of IOSCO's relevant groups. Both digital assets and sustainable finance have been under the spotlight for some time already, but the recent developments in uh, relevant uh, markets and international discussion makes them all the more important for APRC member regulators, as well as regulators and market participants around the world. And I would stress that both areas require regulators to carefully listen to the players in the market, as well as work ever more closely with peer regulators. Then first, uh, let me speak about uh, digital assets. Uh, for the avoidance of doubt, uh, I will be using the terms uh, digital assets and crypto assets um, rather interchangeably. As you're aware, the size of crypto assets, including stable coins and DeFi markets have grown rapidly uh, in the recent years. Uh, they're increasingly attracting institutional investors and the correlation with traditional financial assets is also strengthening. 
Against such backdrop, uh, discussions are underway in the international arena on the appropriate approaches for stable coins, in particular those with possible global reach like DM um, in the context of financial stability and um, money laundering. Discussions for investor protection and enforcement have been uh, started as well. A number of jurisdictions have already introduced or, more, or uh, made proposals on uh, regulations governing crypto assets, including stable coins, but it does not mean that they're complete. For example, uh, Japan has been uh, one of the front runners in uh, introducing registration regime for the crypto asset service providers and has brought ICO and crypto asset derivatives trading under its securities laws. But measures, um, now these measures are aimed at responding to anti-money laundering and investor protection uh, needs while allowing healthy innovation in the field. But now uh, in response to the evolving situation, uh, we are planning to amend the law once again uh, to further ensure that we follow the grand principle of same business, same risk, same rules. The journey will continue. Other APRC member jurisdictions are also taking steps. Um, there are some where uh, regulations have been introduced and implemented already, while proposals are being made in some others. I understand that uh, new regulations are being considered in Europe as well, as Paulina has referred to. Now, uh, such developments may give rise to a concern. Uh, if jurisdictions take uh, different approaches to the definition of crypto assets and regulation of intermediaries, uh, we can introduce a risk of market fragmentation easily. We should also expect that the ambiguity of the scope of the regulation and the low barriers to uh, internet uh, cross-border activities would introduce huge challenges for enforcement and increase risks of uh, regulatory arbitrage. APRC members are rightly concerned about this risk of fragmentation. APRC has been taking up this issue at the past few meetings to learn from each other. Uh, at the most recent meeting last week, um, we had a discussion focusing on what contributions AP APRC can make to international debate. APRC is also discussing enforcement issues at different levels. The challenges identified uh, include those uh, related to, uh, for example, provision of crypto asset services by entities without domestic presence and retail investors seemingly happy-go-lucky investments in crypto assets. Issues surrounding crypto assets also emerge in the context of exchange of information under IOSCO's MMOU. The MMOU monitoring group, on which I also chair, is currently discussing how, how to ensure smooth exchange of information with regard to crypto asset service providers among the uh, signatories. In addition to the cooperation within the region, uh, we have regular dialogues with our fellow counterparts in Europe. And since 2016, uh, regulators from the two regions regularly meet at the EU Asia Pacific Forum. And at the most recent meeting actually held last Friday, uh, this theme was taken up as one of the pillar topics. Crypto assets, as you know, are not bound by the existing uh, financial framework per se, uh, which is both its strength and weakness. And securities regulators will continue to think about appropriate ways and measures to regulate, supervise, and enforce these new types of financial assets and trading uh, in close cooperation with other domestic relevant authorities, as well as international peers. Now, let me turn to sustainable finance. Um, sustainable finance is obviously one of the uh, hottest issues together with digital assets, uh, both internationally and domestically. And while the issue of sustainable finance encompasses a broad range of topics, uh, one of the most imminent topics has to do with disclosure of information. And in this area, against the concerns often cited as alphabet soup of different standards, it is crucial that um, there will be a consistent and comparable set of reporting standards, uh, which, is, which takes into account both the usefulness to investors and the burden for the companies. In this context, uh, IOSCO welcomes the establishment of International Sustainability Standards, uh, standards Board, or ISSB, uh, under the uh, IFRS Foundation last November 
and the initiative to develop a global baseline for sustainability uh, disclosure standards. But learning from the history of that global adoption of IFRS, um, in order for the ISSP standards to become a truly global baseline, it will be uh, critically important that it obtains endorsement by IOSCO. And IOSCO will uh, rigorously look into the proposed standards once they are released. From the APRC point of view, uh, we are working in parallel with initiatives at the entire IOSCO level to contribute to the IOSCO work by sharing the voices from the region. In addition, uh, sustainable finance is one of the biggest themes at the regular dialogue with the industry as well. Um, at the last meeting with ASIFMA, um, such topics, uh, subtopics as taxonomy, disclosure, carbon market, and ESG ratings were pointed out from the ASIFMA side. Uh, APRC members expressed their expectations for the effectiveness and further developments uh, with regard to ASEAN taxonomy and common ground taxonomy by IPSF or uh, International Platform on Sustainable Finance. The issue was taken up at the EU uh, Asia Pacific Forum uh, as one of the pillar topics as well. Now, uh, at the, as the uh, ISSP is working intensively to develop its new standards, jurisdictions in Asia Pacific are starting to develop their own standards reflecting respective situations. In Europe, uh, FRAG is working on the standards in line with the CSRD uh, provisions. Such developments flag a strong need to address the risk of uh, fragmentation. If the scope and depth of taxonomies and disclosure rules differ by jurisdiction, uh, companies and financial institutions operating globally uh, will likely find themselves in a position where uh, complying with the regulation in one jurisdiction would mean violating that in another. And investors will also face difficulty in appropriately comparing and assessing what they invest in. While approaches and stages differ among jurisdictions, we all are heading towards the common goal to have a sustainable society. So in order to achieve this ultimate objective, um, all stakeholders um, need to take it as their own issue and work in a harmonized manner. We are now at a crucial juncture. We need to seriously consider what can be done uh, to mitigate the harmful impact of the potential risk, risk of fragmentation in this area uh, by involving diversity of stakeholders uh, at all levels. So that was a very brief overview of the discussions and activities at APRC regarding two big topics of digital assets and sustainable finance. Both are challenging uh, challenges common to all, all of us, uh, increasing in their significance, especially in recent years as technology, market, and society evolve. They now call for focused efforts, efforts to address the fragmentation risk and cooperation among regulators and market participants. In order to respond to such needs, in addition to promoting trust among the region, we need to build and maintain the same kind of trusting relationship with EU counterparts and others, and engage in a substantive dialogue on a continual basis. To this point, I, would, um, I believe that since the fragmentation was added to the list of priority topics under Japan's G20 presidency in 2019, we have seen highly constructive dialogue also in the context of IOSCO. In addition to visible outputs like the reports on good practices on deference determination and supervisory colleges, ongoing discussion on the risk of fragmentation between different regions is getting increasingly active. However, the two themes discussed today can be seen as phase two of the discussion of um, corporate uh, fragmentation. In other words, it is not a matter of removing fragmentation risks in the existing financial market framework, but collectively uh, addressing cross-sectoral fragmentation risks that are about to take shape. Now with the developments in Ukraine, uh, we are in, in an increased level of uncertainty. During the pandemic, we could all work together towards the shared goal, but the ongoing situation is not necessarily the same. Even in this situation, however, um, we should not stop looking at the fragmentation risks that are about to emerge. And APRC will continue to be an important platform for the securities regulators in the Asia Pacific uh, to cooperate. We sincerely hope that we can work together with the industry as well as the fellow regulators in Europe and other regions. 
And with that, um, I would like to bring my remarks to a close. And I hope you will enjoy an informative meeting and find useful takeaways to bring back home today. Uh, thank you very much. Nagaoka-san, thank you very much indeed for this very interesting speech. I think there are many thoughts in it, but three things I've taken away from that as particularly interesting is uh, the, the way you're proposing a very pragmatic approach to, to crypto assets or however we want to define it, digital assets in the supervisory approach. And I, I was very heartened when you talked about the ISSB and the importance of the ISSB in developing international standards. Yes, we will see how, how they will be implemented. We always know that Japan has been at the forefront of supporting the IFRS and, and many Asian jurisdictions, as will Europe. We have to see where things will end up slightly more to the west of us here in Europe. Um, but I think finally, the, the point, and you're right, I think IOSCO has been at the forefront and you and Ashley have been at the forefront in looking at fragmentation and whether it's mutual recognition or deference or what we call equivalence in Europe, ways of recognizing each other's supervisory frameworks, which has been so difficult after the financial crisis. But that's now nearly 15 years ago. So I think we should kind of look at more, more supervisory trust. And I think that's what this uh, dialogue was about and what your forum is about. So thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us and, and for your uh, chairmanship of, of this initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you.